Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about potential tropical storm Ida as it looks to have impacts for the Caribbean and the US as the tropics really start to get active. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is your daily overview for August the 24th. And what we are looking at here as the tropics are really starting to get active, we've got three features to be on the lookout for uh, that the National Hurricane Center has highlighted. There's one feature out here into the open waters of the Atlantic that is expected to move northwest. It's got about a 50% a, a chance of uh, development over the coming days as this moves towards uh, Bermuda, but a lot of the guidance has this actually moving back out to sea. So I'm not terribly too concerned uh, with this particular system. We also have another system out here just coming off the coast of Africa. That's got about a 40% chance of uh, de development in the coming days. That is supposed to be lifted off into uh, portions of the Northwest as well, but it's a long ways out guys. So there's plenty of uh, time to be you know, look out for this act activity but what i'm concerned about is this tropical feature down here into portions of the lesser antilles now the national hurricane centers actually ramped this up to now a 60 percent chance of development in the coming days uh it wasn't in on, on their radar just yesterday and uh, we talked about this feature possibly going into the gulf of mexico and it's going into a little bit more favorable environment as it, as it continues off, moving off into the west. And the National Hurricane Center could actually upgrade this, a potential tropical depression by the end of the week as it heads towards uh, the Yucatan. But it looks to have major impacts into uh, portions of Jamaica on Thursday with some very heavy rainfall. And a lot of the guidance has this pushing into the Gulf and, and has uh, a lot of the guidance has this steering towards Texas as we get into early next week. So we got a lot to talk about. So here's the overall satellite picture of what we're looking at. Uh, so there's, there's several features. First up into the US, we've got this trough that's be, gonna be digging in from the north. It's more of a zonal flow. So a lot of the cooler air and a lot of the instability air is gonna be up to the north. We've got some severe weather to talk about in portions of uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. I looks, it looks to be an active week up there with uh, sporadic severe weather, but a lot of heavy rain over uh, portions of uh, Wisconsin and the northern states here uh, this week. So I'm expecting a lot of uh, flooding rains, especially uh, over uh, Wisconsin as we get through uh, the entire week. But there's features out here in, into the Atlantic I wanna highlight. Here, this feature off uh, the Bahamas, this is what they call a tut low. This is getting some instability uh, into uh, portions of the Bahamas, but that's also going to help maybe uh, have a, you know, a Band-Aid on Florida. I don't really think this system down here is going to have much of an impact as it continues moving off. This will be influenced by the tut low towards uh, Florida. Here we've got another feature out here into the Atlantic. That's the one that has that 40% chance going to be lifting off into Bermuda. And yes, this other feature off here, the coast of Africa, uh, that has that 40% chance out here. But here's the feature that I'm looking at just uh, west of the Lesser Antilles uh, currently right now. It's got uh, more instability trying to wrap around it. And as it goes into a little bit more favorable environment, it's going to pick up a lot of tropical moisture and just really start to get its act together uh, in the in the days ahead as it, as it continues uh, lifting off into the northwest. Uh, so here's the overall water vapor imagery. What I'm looking at here is here's that feature out in the Lesser Antilles. It's got it's got some dry air to contend with, but this is very subtle. It's actually not much. Uh, here's the tut low that we talked about and a lot of dry air is getting filtered in on the south side from that system but it's got a lot of open waters i think a lot of this will overtake this dry air as this continues moving off into the west and it's got a lot of deep tropical moisture to work with so that's why i'm pretty concerned especially as we get into that thursday time frame for jamaica for a, a, a pretty good uh, heavy rain event uh, you could see some tropical storm force winds as far as like wind gust 
uh, by then on the island. So Thursday does not look like a pretty day at all for uh, Jamaica, as we're probably going to be getting a lot of heavy rain over that area. And that will, again, uh, move out and potentially start to impact uh, the Caymans and going into uh, the Yucatan, where they just got impacted from uh, Grace. So let's take a look at the overall EPS guidance. And this is definitely very concerning that we've got literally about 80 percent of the members of the european model wanting to take this thing into texas you see it's not very bullish uh until it actually gets into the gulf of mexico so that's why they're saying hey it could be just a low-end tropical depression and more of a rain threat for the caribbean and the yucatan but as it gets into the open waters of the uh, gulf of mexico there's a lot of uh, untapped energy here this area of, env of uh, environment has not actually been tapped into yet from a tropical system. So there's definitely uh, more. It's definitely concerning. So we have literally about 80 percent of the members and some of them actually want to take this into a hurricane. But a lot of the guidance actually steers it towards uh, Texas as we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week. Uh, here's the latest uh, uh, GFS ensemble uh, members as well. They're also implying the same thing. So we're already starting to see model congruency coming together saying, hey, we could have a formidable storm to be looking out for as we get towards uh, the end of the weekend into early next week. And yes, we could be looking at impacts for Texas with a tropical system by then. So the reason being, here are the steering currents. So as we go into Thursday, so here we talked about the upcoming cool down yesterday with this trough digging in out from the west, bringing some very cooler conditions. <laughs> Actually have frost and frost advisories in portions of Montana this morning, and uh, that that uh, and, and Wyoming as as well. And that cooler air will continue to press down, but the dominant feature is the ridge that's going to be dominant over southeast canada and the in the northeast as that's going to help steer uh potential ida by then uh you know off, off and to the west and that's one of the influences that's one of the concerns that i'm definitely concerned about this year is this is going to be your steering wheel and i think this ridge is going to be locked in place for a for a while now and that's going to be one of the main setups uh going forward into hurricane season as a lot of these storms are going to be you know favorable to track further off into the west towards the united states but what's concerning is as this continues to deepen this ridge actually breaks down as it breaks down on the south side, it allows a tropical system out in the Gulf to be lift further north and potentially impact Texas. Now, if you recall last week from Grace, we had the same setup, but the ridge actually built in on the south side and actually intensified as, it, as, the, as uh, Grace was pushing further west. As the high pressure continued to push further west, it kept pushing Grace further down into the south and that's why it made impact into Mexico. We're not seeing that from this system. We're actually seeing a lot of the same setup with the ridge, but it really starts to break down on the south side. And as it breaks down, that opens the door for potential Ida to start coming northward and potentially make impact towards Montana I mean, into uh, on Monday into Tuesday into texas so i'm definitely for definitely concerned uh for texas with this feature because look what the open waters it has to work with here's here's what happened with grace you can see a little bit cooler waters just off the coast that is from the recent upwelling from grace but as that came across and moved into these untapped waters and these very high waters down here in the bay of campeche it exploded into a major hurricane just coming on shore and so now we have that same feature coming across the yucatan but it goes into untapped waters that has not been tapped into there's no upwelling this is prime energy for a tropical system to go into so i'm deeply concerned as we get into late week into early next week a uh, late weekend into early next week is look i mean it's got some of the highest temperatures and the sea surface temperatures out there going into upper 
80 degree water it's not going to be like uh what Henri had to deal with with those much cooler waters those lower 80 waters but as it got further north then it went into those low 70 degree waters so as it went further north and tapped into the low 70s it it uh, decreased in wind and that's why it made a landfall as a 60 mile per hour tropical storm this is the complete opposite animal from Henri as these warmer temperatures will be increasing not 73 degrees but we're talking upper 80s so that's a way different beast to be dealing with and a potential uh impact i mean just last year around this time uh, you all remember lore that came ashore around august 27th and had those 150 mile per hour winds so yeah there's no stranger for these bigger storms uh to make impact this time of year up along the texas uh texas coastline so here's the latest uh water precipitation index for uh into thursday time frame i stopped it here because i'm deeply concerned about some very heavy rain setting up this look at the blue i mean we're talking over three inch per hour we're talking p potentially uh torrential rains over jamaica with mudslides landslides that island is very susceptible they got hit pretty hard from grace actually and uh it never actually made direct impact on on the island but it made a lot of it's not going to be really a wind threat for jamaica i'm talking a very heavy rain threat potentially coming up on thursday so it's not going to be a pretty day if you live in jamaica definitely hunker down as we got a lot of uh heavy rain impacts coming up through uh thursday but as we get into friday it's going to start moving off uh of the island but going into uh the caymans with some very uh heavy rain and that continues uh to push off into the northwest impacting the same areas of cozumel cancun playa de carmen that literally just got impacted from grace now we're going to potentially get impacted again with potentially a tropical depression uh by then not really a wind threat for them but mainly a heavy rain threat as this will continue pushing off uh, into the Gulf by the time we get into early next week. And that's when I'm really concerned that it could potentially start ramping up into a formidable storm by then. But we're going to be dealing with some very heavy rain. I mean, you got an open, open, uh, you know, tropical storm uh, potentially out in the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. So it's got all that fuel to work with. And don't just be, uh, you know, going forward, be concerned about the center and where the, you know, where the center is going to be because, you know, they put the cone out for a reason. But even every tropical system is different. We saw with Henri, I mean, like places like Jersey was actually never in the cone of Henri, Henri but with a north northwest you know movement as it went ashore a lot of it was west side loaded which is very unusual for a tropical system but with that it made a lot of impacts into new jersey with like eight nine ten inches of rain and they were actually never in the cone of the path of the storm so definitely don't just pay attention on just the cone itself as we move forward with these tropical systems because every system is different and they got to be treated as such. Uh, but this particular system looks to have a lot of fuel to work with and it's going into more favorable environment and a lot, you know, uh, you know, warmer waters uh, to work with in the Gulf of Mexico. So yes, as we move into Tuesday, we could be looking at some impacts for Texas, not just a wind threat, but a very heavy rain threat. Threat. I mean, you know, in Houston, I mean, it's a low lying area, so they're really susceptible uh, to flooding. So I'm definitely concerned about a tropical system coming into Texas by early next week, and even the Icon model. So we're definitely starting seeing more and more models. I mean, even the latest GFS model has it going just a tad bit further south. But so a lot of the, a lot of the guidance now, guys, is heading towards uh, Texas with a, a wind threat and a heavy rain threat as we go into the day of early next week uh here's the typical steering currents of what we see tropical systems so it's not out of the question you see a tropical system you know coming into texas you know around this time of year into august and especially in september and we go into you know peak season is september the 10th so yeah definitely uh things are gonna be starting to ramp up here's your latest uh wind threat uh, just to kind of give you a wind swath guesstimate of what it look, potentially looks like right now. 
yes, you could be having some tropical storm force gust over Jamaica, not sustained. We're talking gust of upwards to 40 plus uh, miles per hour potential on the island on Thursday. That would go into, into the Caymans and then start having uh, some impacts and it starts to really start to ramp up as we get into early next week. And it could potentially be a storm or even potentially a hurricane uh, by then as it makes the uh, Texas coastline with a wind threat uh, well inland uh, from this system. Here's the here's kind of a simulated model of what the waves could potentially look like by the time we get into that Monday time frame of some 45 foot waves crashing coming offshore. But look at the arrows. I wanted to point this attention to a lot of the a lot of the the movement is going towards the coast. It's not away from the coast. So a lot of the water will be pushed uh, inland, not like what we see with Marty out here. A lot of the a lot of the water is pushing out to sea, not inland. So that's a definitely a concern. Of course, on top of you know high tide potentially by then and then storm surge. So yeah, definitely the wind direction is going to be pushing this system into the into the coastline and then here's the water vapor imagery what it could potentially look like by the time we get into that monday time frame as well with this instability up here in the northeast you can definitely see the ridge starts to weaken underneath and that would allow uh potential ida by then to come northward impacting texas uh with a very so with a very heavy rain event and here's just kind of an idea of where the heavy rain may fall over the next seven to 10 days. Yes, Jamaica, I'm um, concerned, into the Caymans, uh, going into portions of uh, Cuba. But then as it gets out into the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico, I mean, all bets are off. I mean, these are multi-inch rains, some double-digit rainfall uh, coming into Texas. So it could be a huge flood threat uh, for portions of Texas going into next week. Uh, here's the latest uh, GFS, man, almost kind of implying the same thing. So we're getting a lot of guidance with some very torrential, heavy rainfall, potentially inundated uh, Texas, especially along the coast, but not just the coast. If this storm kind of holds together, it transfers into a, a heavy rain a threat, a, event inland. And so, yes, it's definitely concerning that we're seeing some double digit totals uh, pop up on uh, some of the simulated maps uh, now of even upward to almost 20 inches of rain in isolated spots. I mean, it's, it's no question a tropical system in Texas could dump that much heavy rain. We're off the coast. The precipital water index values are two, three, upwards to four inches an hour. During Harvey, they got up to seven inch per hour rainfall rates. So this is no stranger to some of these of uh, some very heavy rainfall events. So I'm deeply concerned about a, a, a big a, a big threat for uh, Texas as we go into uh, early next week. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.